No, the mic. That's all right. Well, uh, we've been talking about the Snyder Cut for a bit, but... Okay, that's fine. But, uh, well, so... I did like Stephen Wolf's look design a little bit better. It was cool. I, I, you know what it, I think it was? It looked a little bit more polished, I think. And that, that was because it was the original design anyways. And I feel like maybe it they definitely just felt a little, you know, the, out of the entire movie, he might be the brightest thing. With, yeah, his shiny. <laughs> except for the, except for the. Psh. Yeah. Um, but once again, I I really think in general, there were a lot of things that I saw in the trailer that actually had me worried that were not as bad as I was worried. Uh, one was Darkseid's design. Yeah, they they had a couple. Way. It was good. It was good. Um, I was worried because they had shown that one scene where he's like talking through the thing. Oh, and it yeah, looked yeah, yeah. that that would I would have been like, uh, uh, but his, the only. My the only the issue because they were much better too with Stephen Wolf as well. I actually didn't. There, I felt there was so much voice change in this movie between the heroes and the villains that it was a bit overused. Because Batman and Cyborg both I used Batman it. did change his voice. Was it different in this one? It was a he uses a voice changer in a lot of the scenes to like deepen and vocalize it. I thought it was. It I is. Was like, I don't uh, remember. Cyborg's voice that. also. I feel like and maybe I once again I gotta go read watch the original because once again awesome thank you rick montoya for letting us know that there was no sound as well uh i felt like i said that i wanted to watch this without watching the other piece of trash because i didn't want it to color my opinion of this i wanted to watch this for what it exactly is and then like i said in most cases i'm pretty much saying uh 100 percent improvements all of the things that were like not great are just tiny things, and they would have been things I nitpicked yeah. in any movie, right? That are tiny things that don't really decrease the score of the movie for me, right? Uh -huh. My score of the movie, the little things can add up to maybe half a point, right? Like all the little tiny fuck ups on filmography, or uh, like if the sound was weird in one scene, or uh -huh. uh, one scene CGI looked all fucked up or something that if it wasn't like the main battle or something but none of that's gonna make me drop tons of points on a movie i care more about a little preferences your little nit nitpicks huh oh yeah they're just like little things where i was like eh, i i wish that i could have heard more of ray fisher's actual voice uh -huh. as opposed to the vocalizer and i understand he's a robot and that's why they have it the reason is i felt like it would have given him more uh impact because uh -huh. he was going for what's uh was kind of a deeper darker cyborg in this which i also enjoyed more is in line with the comics oh yeah he was very like uh broody, uh, broody. broody. <laughs> yeah. totally totally matches comics that's a hundred percent one of my issues that is a little not nitpicky was actually with their choice and I can't remember in the first one once again, but, but their choice of making his uh thing a car accident. Oh, okay. Because I felt like the tension that he had later on, the I'll try not like we said, we're not trying not to spoil too much, even though it's been out like what Yeah, time. it it gave that But I put like non spoiler in the so try not to spoil. So I guess it's good that we didn't have the volume on earlier because we were spoiling a lot of stuff. There, there was a there was a few There were a couple of things. <laughs> um, but uh, in his relationship later, it would have made more sense had they followed a little closer to the comic book backstory. It would have gave a little more credence to kind of his broodiness. He still had a good reason, right? Because his whole body got, you know, cyborg fied. But yeah. it would it would have been even better with the original comic book push. And you didn't really need to tie it too, too heavily, but to have the same circumstances. Because I don't know if you know Cyborg's origin story in the comics. I knew a little bit of it, um, and I think that's just because watching Teen Titans go. <laughs> I think <laughs> that they're always, I, they're always, you know, I kind of doing. Yeah, I think they may have actually retconned it recently, or Did maybe they... the, the, since his creation. Maybe not recently, but since his creation, I think they retconned it to a car crash. Um. But the original one is actually a lab accident. Okay. Caused by his father. 
Yeah, because I think that one that they were doing was like, because he got in a football accident. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they did in the original one. I don't remember. It wasn't. Any, I don't think it was any good either. Like I said, this was just my criticism of that one part. I was like, if they'd have done that, it would have lent even more weight to his heavy character. And like I said, the reason the heavy character didn't come for me or would have came heavier for me is when you vocalize bass, uh-huh. it uh, it kind of like loses the broadness and it becomes less bass and uh-huh. not all the time like obviously you have 808s and stuff but the human voice doesn't go down to that level of bass to take advantage of like an 808 you only really get from like two or three hundred thousand for most of it. like unless you got like super deep voice or something. and so i I felt like a little less vocalizing on that because I felt like everybody who is an alien had a voice changer. <laughs> Dark sides, the sod, and Stefan Wolf, right? Uh huh. But I felt like, uh, I feel like you don't necessarily need that in every character. It was okay. Uh huh. But I, I felt like sometimes I want to hear more of the original voice of the actor because the, the voice really does give a lot of impact with its slight variations uh-huh. and sometimes a little of that is lost through any kind of vocalization the same i could even say i think of a little bit of ultron but the voice actor for ultron is just like the bomb thing so. who is that that was, that was, uh, that was um... i can't remember um, I but forget. otherwise everything else about cyborg was better in this movie and you can definitely see why uh Ray Fisher was angry that he didn't get to like have these scenes in the movie, and well, especially yeah, and then, because I, I think his, they said his was the most that was reshot was all his scenes. Yeah, the Flash really didn't lose too much, everything. honestly. He lost that one car scene in like a couple scenes at the end, which I'm not sure if you're at. Uh-huh. Um, he lost. There were little things throughout the movie, and that's what I'll say. I even heard the, the fight there, scene was different. Uh, which one? The one at the end? What? Yeah, at the very end was that. Yeah, a little bit. It's it's not a uh, because all I even of that different the whole scene where uh, remember the Flash is saving the little kids. Yeah, that part's different. That's all gone. Once again, <laughs> that that's all gone. But in the sense that is the entire fight totally different? No, the the entry I think is and vastly different. I guess different. too they made the Flash like actually was helping more in the fight than he was because they they made him like he was helping outside and everything, and then this one he was actually helping Ray Fisher even do some stuff in the fight. So I, I mean, you will have to really you you'll have to watch in the for the ha- second one. Let me know like what. I'll have to look again, and I'll I'll break. probably have to go watch. I don't know if I can watch. I was that just reading up on again. Some of it, and this is some of the uh, things. Uh, there are definitely back. some littler things. I will say that there once again. I feel like the Flash, aside from his solo scene, and then the scenes at the the, the end. end, a little bit in the mother box stuff. But those are actually scenes that once again I would have preferred to have seen a little bit more of the tie into the original comic. Just mm-hmm personal that's just his version and it's it's a it's tying it in yeah. right to the story it's trying to tie everything together which is yeah and cool. he, yeah it was pretty good yeah there was there was a lot of you know kind of setting up for all these other movies that you know were supposed to happen like there was supposed to be a cyborg movie that's I mean, not that was... necessarily what i'm talking about as much as the connecting of like every single plot thread in the universe oh, is connected okay. Okay. everybody knows about everybody Right, mm-hmm. like the the lanterns all know about Earth, all the and the dark side and the Kryptonians and the and that is cool, but I think sometimes when it's like overriding some of the things that well, once again, it, the original storyline was the Eradicator puts him in the chamber, so it's not like you're gonna get that. That's not happening. No, there's no way they're gonna throw the Eradicator in at the last second. Um, but I would have, I what I could have seen was Batman using his investigative abilities in conjunction with Cyborg's mother box technology uh-huh. to figure out about Kryptonian revival technology. Then again, I mean, I guess it's kind of a Deus Ex Machina anyway. <laughs> you know, it's all preference, and you know. And that's why I said most said most of the stuff is mo- little nitpicky things. The ones that are like kind of medium gripes are only ones that are like comic book differences. Where it's yeah. like, uh, my biggest 
still gripe with this movie that wasn't different from the last one as far as I remember. Batman doesn't use bullets and guns. Yeah. I remember I'm alright even with him killing people for the most part. Honestly. But he'd like kill you with a battering to the eye. Or <laughs> I I was even cool with the I don't know if you probably haven't been there, but he, he uses like a gun that does not shoot bullets, right? Like or the grappling hook, right? The the grapple gun. Uh -huh. I'm even okay with that because it's not the kind of like bullet trauma that is supposed to be associated with his character and his mother and father's death. Once again, the killing, I mean up and down. He is has killed before in the comics, obviously. Although it's few and far between considering he has like a Almost coming up on a hundred year run now, right? Yeah, they just had his uh anniversary. Uh it was last year or two yeah. years ago, I can't remember. It was um So I know they had like the thousand a while back. Yeah, it was a thou it was a thousand issues of Detective Comics. Which is cool. And I mean if you consider all the side shots, it's probably double of that. <laughs> but uh so yeah, overall, you know, I think it was it was a pretty much better film. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it much better from what I've watched so far, <laughs> but I no, um... I definitely enjoyed it. But you'll enjoy the end. My favorite parts of the whole movie were were the although I guess I'm not like talking, I don't I don't have it split into his like the epilogue blah blah blah. I just watched it in two four four, four one hour chunks. <laughs> so for me, I think it was, I think it's the second part and the fourth and the last part are the best part. Okay. And then the first and third part were good, but I felt like there were things in there that could have been cut to pull off the four hours. And that either added unnecessary fluff, uh, such as the Norwegian... The Norwegian yeah. chick just sniffing probably, Aquaman's quote. That was probably the only <laughs> thing that I thought was kind of like... Why did they that, do the scene? That one was one of the only scenes that I thought was just like straight weird. But from a story perspective, I thought there were quite a few scenes throughout the movie that probably could have been chopped off without much effect. Uh, one of the biggest things I did like in this one is that you had a new Wonder Woman set. Whole new Wonder Woman thing. Oh, yeah. Which is great because I honestly would have cut out the first part. <laughs> In the original one, I thought that part was basically fanfare in base in its sense. Like it, that's not if you cut that out of the story, the plot doesn't change, right? Or, yeah. The same with the Barry Allen scene. If you cut that out of the story, the plot remains the same. Not yeah. not everything, right? But just those certain specific scenes. What you do get is a little bit more context, details here and there. More character um, development, which... Yep. There were a couple there. scenes uh, that I knew were Whedon scenes that weren't going to be in here that I did prefer that added, I think, to the movie, which were little things like sitting on the lasso. And even though that was comedy, it was a very good addition to a scene where they really didn't have any options. Uh -huh. in order to, like, break tension that otherwise a formative group did not have any reason to have. Uh, I will say there's still comedy in this cut. Yeah, it's no, just there was, very there dry. Was, yeah, there was a couple stuff there that made me laugh here and there. So oh, it was, no. It's even, even from Batman and stuff. I mean, the line, I'm rich, remained in. Yeah. That which might, I guess was that a line. Snyder's. Yeah, yeah, it must have been, but I heard a bunch of people complaining about it, like, a long time ago, so hopefully they'll delete those old posts, man. <laughs> a lot of people um, have been having to go back and delete old posts. So, um, what did you think about the Captain America then, Winter Soldier then? It was pretty good. I felt like I was expecting more from the first episode. Which is weird, because it actually started off really intense, right? Like, yeah. they, they got right into it in this one, which is funny, so I think it's going to get brave reviews from the general run, right? Like all the action junkies will love this, right? Oh yeah, no it was good. Good good good. And, oh, absolutely. And and the the filmography is still looking basically like, cinema yeah, standard. Like a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it looks like a TV good. show. 
It looks good. Um, um, I did, you know, I did like that we're getting, I guess, a little bit more character development with some Bucky and uh, with uh, the Falcon as well. And it was pretty nice to kind of get that little, um, not nice, I guess, but it was kind of like a little slap in the face to be like, oh, wow, at that end there. Because I was not expecting that. I did not know they were going to go that way. <laughs> I only knew because the internet spoiled it for me. See, and I, I did. I, 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 I honestly that. did before, though, too, because every time. Uh, only, only because of the starting scene where every time someone puts down the shield, somebody else picks it up, and if it's not somebody you gave it to, it might be somebody that's like. You know. What yeah. I didn't expect was the inclusion of flag smashers. Yeah, that was actually kind of. Uh... It was just a nice shout to the comics. They yeah. might not even do any of the same because it seems oh. like they're totally different. Obviously, is related to this world. Um. Which, once again, I'm I. It's one of those ones where it's more about the shout out for the flag smashers because they're not an established prop. No, like not like they they've been around and they do things, but like they're, they're not, not a name. For a lot. Yeah, as I said, they're not used very much. <laughs> no, no, they're very much like usually Captain America stories. Sometimes like they'll show up in a Wolverine tie in or some stuff. You know. Blah blah blah. The 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 thing being is like. I I just like the fact that they're pushing for new stuff for side characters. Right? I mean, there was that whole thing of, like, them saying when he was having the uh, meeting, you know, like, there needs to be more new new heroes and stuff. I'm yes, like, ooh. They're so definitely pushing. Saying, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be probably getting having... the Young Avengers series soon. Too. I hope so. I feel like that's what they're working I, for. We've been writing on that for a while since those predictors put it out, so... Just gotta hold on to those books a little longer. <laughs> no, it's com it's coming. I mean, it's inevitably coming, and I think it's coming fairly soon too. Just based on the structure of how this is going, and in adding on the Corona stuff, like they're gonna have to put out some work to make up time. Right? They really like, and not to make fun of it, because it absolutely is the best comic book movie of the year. Uh. But Zack Snyder's Justice League has also been basically the only comic book movie of the year, and I want another one. Um, and we're supposed to get more. So, <laughs> but I mean, at least, hey, Godzilla, what is that next? That's week true. Or? Well, and I, I will say that HBO Max is winning right now. You know what I mean? They've been doing pretty good, yeah. With and a lot of and stuff. I will say, especially based on that movie, as opposed to the the last Justice League, WB really shouldn't have like just dropped it. Had they just worked a little bit with Snyder and just let him adapt it a bit. I mean, once again, I think that had that four hour movie come out and this had not, it would still not have done all of that great. Mm -hmm. uh, people are bitching and like, oh, well, Infinity War was three hours. Yeah, four yeah, hour movies was. get intermissions. That's that's a lot. That's literally that's long. a really literally people There's, pass out of that. The thing time. is, WB you know is not gonna let that pass through because it's no. Like that's... When was the last time a four hour movie hit the film? Dances uh, with Wolves or something? I, I don't even know. And and that <laughs> is one thing. The 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 cuts that I I think should be made are minuscule at best. Yeah, it's a couple a couple seconds from couple scenes all throughout the movie, and you've got about. 30 minutes or an hour and then you do have a three hour movie and i do think this would make an excellent three hour movie i think at three hours my score on this jumps a whole nother point at least so it would i think it pops up to like an eight if it was just cut in certain areas and once again that's just my personal preference i just knew there were scenes in there where i was like uh what was it it was like a driving scene i remember where it's like lois or something that's driving. <laughs> and uh there are scenes that were were important and minor that could have been cut but i am glad were in there such as like the little hint at superman and lois's thing which i don't want to spoil in case you haven't seen it i don't know uh but there there are little things right here and there you haven't seen the end yet so i can't really comment on like the differences in the ending and how they were both better and also well, I did for watch me. the epilogue. Yeah, I did watch that, and um, that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting to see where he was kind of going with all this. I thought that was interesting. It does, unfortunately, kind of 
it, you know, it's kind of a tease almost at this point for some people it, who it are is that. wanting I, this to happen because they're like, well, this is never going to happen anyways. You know, I, I did it. This is what I wanted hey to man, do. Hey, never, man, never say never. I, I mean, but, the, the, uh, yeah, the, I guess. We, people on, said right, never WB about this like, cut. Ah, so here's the thing. I, I honestly believe that that this sets up a decent enough universe, even if they had to go the route of saying, uh, multiverse, right? Just have the thing is, all. Like, what would you do with the Batman stuff? Like, who would you replace? Multiverse. That? Oh yeah. Oh okay. I see what you mean. You're going okay. You're going that way. All right. Yeah. Multiverse, <laughs> man. Get it. That get works. it popping. Get that a works. jump on Marvel. Get the I jump. Mean, they did. They did talk. They did say multiverse in the in the epilogue. Did they not? They did, but so did Marvel before that. So yeah, saying so, and <laughs> doing are not the same. Also, technically, they're still in like a. I guess they're parallel side dimension Alternate there. Alternate timeline, he was saying. Well, t I... technically, they're in the main timeline still, so they're not in in an alternate. But they do know of the multiverse theoretically at that point because of Flash. I'm guessing he does have new armor that looks like it's helping to him to push his that was limit. Cool. He kind of looked almost like the what was the Red Death almost Flash kind of almost a little bit a little bit I didn't know who it was at first much. for sure uh the Cyborg one definitely was cool to see Destro yeah. is a little up and down for me but I think that's just because I don't care much about Deathstroke so um, yeah. whether or not he's in it I'm like eh cool I gotta see more Deathstroke to see, like maybe he, you know I see more of him and he's amazing. We gotta see more of him. Um, I will well, well, say that the dialogue and the interaction was much better, but I still I think... L let me say this: this Joker was ten times better than the Suicide Squad Joker, in my opinion. Oh, oh yeah, a lot much better. But it was still kind of mids for me on Joker. I'd still probably take most of the live action Jokers over that for that particular renditioning of the Joker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think the most was okay too. I liked the laugh. Was, it was alright. Like it, it was okay. I, I mean, it wasn't say it was dying. great, but it was okay. It was better than his other one. Yeah, that was. Yeah, but I once know. again not comparing it to the other movie. It was just not. It's not even in my. It, all the animated laughs were better than that laugh, right? All the video game laughs basically were better than that laugh. Uh, I forgot who the cartoon version was. Not obviously mark hamill but the other like the lego blocks cartoon version of the joker wasn't it uh, oh Pat it might Oswald? have been mark it might have been mark I don't, hamill I think it was, okay. <laughs> but right. uh, but let's uh, see, so moving on from the sax side because we've been on that one for a while and then we have we what we did Captain we did uh, uh, yeah well, godzilla is really the next, the next that's thing. the next thing yeah will be next week right is that let's see that's the 31st, 31st right so, so it's this 20 seconds okay oh, yeah yeah 10 more days so Nine we're almost days. there for that one i am super excited for that that's just gonna be fine that's and once again hbo max is doing good man they have their site crash from the leak thing they're gonna have uh this they, they I, did i'm gonna have to go uh, see that one in theater though because godzilla is like i gotta watch that theaters the are screen. open again I'll yeah they're open in colorado theater. i forgot yeah. i probably should have went and watched the snyder cut in theaters and maybe i would have like watched i don't think they it did that more. i think just hbo was just oh yeah that one was probably thing. the only one yeah they're, they, they bought it they said they bought the the rights for him to do the whole thing. i i think it was a good idea because in a lot of ways aside from wonder woman they've they've had decent material but i don't feel like their subscriptions match their material mm -hmm. but i've checked out some decent stuff on there but i and and they are producing the new content that people are enjoying, you know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. it's surprising yeah, sometimes when they're I think they I think their hosting might not be up to par. Let's but maybe not. Oh um Keanu Reeves is a Berserker comic that Yeah, it got its own it's getting its own <laughs> Netflix series. I saw that. <laughs> you know they were gonna be we can't we can't let that go. We gotta get it's that. Keanu right. Reeves, man, it's come on. The question yeah. is who's going to play it? No, it's I, I, <laughs> yeah, they were saying something about even an anime kind of thing they're going to go for. Maybe good for it. Hey. That might and be once the again, I, I'm excited for the Oh, the you know what else, too, coming. about anime? Sorry, is the Invincible this Friday. That's right. I forgot. Amazon, right? Yeah, Prime will be this Friday. Okay, so I can I'll, actually I'm check that out. Check that I've, out. I've read, I haven't read the whole comic. I've read like Me neither. Like I, I read about, I, yeah, I probably have read about maybe 20 so far. 
It was uh, cool. It was, it was interesting. It's interesting. It was I do like childhood it. superhero dark kind of gritty. There's, there's a lot of uh, fans for it for sure. They like their. I mean, it's uh, a good. It's a good book. You don't once again, and I say I don't say this lightly because people are often dismiss numbers, right? They're like, ah, oh, you don't get to 300 chapters by being a bad book. Mm-hmm. You just don't. There's, there's you may have reason. some some issues here and there like people aren't going to like, but still, it's right, it You can good, be up and it? down. <laughs> it, it was good enough, right? And that's always, <laughs> that's always how, the other thing I always think is uh, rough is because, right, I feel like people always rate things in a kind of skewed perspective of, or even think about ratings in a kind of skewed perspective, right? Whereas, like, I gave Justice League, like, right, a 5.5, but that that doesn't mean I didn't say you don't watch it. And it, I, I've, I'm just giving that a score, right? Like, mm-hmm. the one is worst unwatchable, at least in my head. And ten being like you know the best thing I've ever watched ever, and so five is mid great, you know, it'd be middle of the road. But I feel like people don't see it like that. I feel like they see it that one to four is garbage, and then five to ten is like your actual measuring. You know, and then honestly, sometimes people like things that you may just not like. I mean, there's you know, it's oh, funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, I I go through some of the movies that I loved as a child, and like oh yeah, oh, now that Ron to my tomatoes is around. Um, some of these movies now got ratings. Some of the older movies I used to watch, and people rate them bad. I'm like, really? This movie's good. Why? I, and I, you know, <laughs> and and I and I definitely understand for certain things like a certain perspective of like taste. Like, so one of the things, right? The S- Snyder's dark footage. That's a taste thing, right? That's a stylized yeah. dark film. So if you like that, and you like it more than brightly colored, like color comic kind of stuff. And more like kind of dark, gritty Batman, Spawnish stuff as opposed to like Spider Man. Yeah, I mean, it's not quite as dark as Sin City. I mean, Frank Miller like probably should have never done that movie, but <laughs> you know, Sin City for what it is is randomly so cult, cult. It's it's very much in that kind of like cult follow. That's what I've where heard. it it just has like this draw to certain people. And I mean, like, it does I, have its own style. I mean, it is. Here's the thing: cool. I can watch about half of Sin City. I enjoy about half of Sin City, but it's too damn long. I mean, it has some pretty good actors. I mean, Bruce Willis. Come on, that's great actors. And if you look at the visual <laughs> effects for what it was trying to do, I thought it did fine. Yeah, but too long. It's a little <laughs> long and drawn out in some pieces, and it's written. It's re- It's it's watched like you would read a Sandman. If that makes any sense, it's kind of sure. you have to chew on it. I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it doesn't just mindlessly go down easily, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But there is something to be said for flow and pacing, etc. And once again, to be said for like preference and style, right? Like I don't enjoy Batman versus Superman, but my dad thought it was pretty decent, uh-huh. or he he enjoyed it. You know, he just likes Superman hero film so you yeah. enjoyed that it was just superheroes and fighting and he didn't really care too much about you know cinematography or style he just liked watching it yeah uh, <laughs> he said he doesn't question it right. not unless like, it's, it's ridiculous just... ridiculous because once again he's he's not like looking at it and yeah. being a critic he's just looking at it and watching it and enjoying it right and i i think that's a whole nother thing is like i always give like a critic review and then a personal review right so like my critic review the things that pull off points for the cuts are like story based as opposed to things things that ha- i had a problem with that weren't changed in this one right or weren't different in this one that had the same flaws as the other mm-hmm. uh which were i don't want to say them because they're, they're kind of spoiled right like but basically threat I felt like was a big part of it. Um, a lot of the movies, and and even to other things I've watched and seen, where I want the threat to be not just from 
this or that that can be like pushed around. I I want Dark Side himself to be stomping fools out, right? I don't want Dark Side to hop in a spaceship that stomps some fools out. Uh huh. And that's not the exact thing that happened here, but it's it's some aspects of that are similar to it. Uh. Like I said, it's really tough, and the, it kind of falls into that Steppenwolf armor thing. Uh-huh. But, once again, it's just one of those little things. Right. Like, you, you have perspectives on every movie, like, uh... Oh, God, what what was it? Uh, the Witcher, right? Or a show. Either way, The Witcher, I like... One, so I gotta watch that. Oh, you have it? It's really uh-huh. good. That's what I heard. Mm-hmm. I gotta check it it's out. Excellent. I I think Henry Cavill makes a su- su- a ten times better draw than he does a Superman. But that's just <laughs> me. He he makes an excellent draw. Like he did such a good job, and I thought I thought that whole thing was done pretty well. And I didn't even watch play the Witcher games. So I heard it's a book first, though. Yeah, it's a book. And I heard, heard that this I heard the movie is more based off the book. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Off the book. So more. that. But I, I haven't done either of them, so I just watched it and I enjoyed the shit <laughs> right. out of it. It was really right. it was good. good. Anyway, but, but some people didn't like it because they played the game, right? And it wasn't the exact. And I think you and know, it wasn't that's going a, for the game kind of style. Thing, right. Yeah. Which is a perspective thing. Another, all right, a, a, a even better example Death Note live action. Oh my God. In America. Right. It's awful. But it's not as bad if you don't compare it to the original. And I can't believe they're making another one. <laughs> Are they really? They said they were gonna make another one. Did they win? I, you might have to look it up. I might be. I may be might tripping. Up on my butt. I don't know, man. That that one was pretty universally like not like. But there were a bunch one. of people I had seen. I scoping through the forums, there were a decent amount of people who said like I've never seen it and, and I liked it. Like yeah, yeah. I he's know, like I just like, kind of enjoyed no, it. No, no. <laughs> look, but. Like, once again, it's one of those things, and that's always been my issue with the, this one even the, the same, right? Like, as, even as good as this one was, I want it to be, outst- it, I want it to match the source material of DC, which is outstanding. It's the stuff that the whole thing was built on. Mm-hmm. All comic books were built up from Superman, and you know what I mean? All female superheroes are modeled after basically Wonder Woman in some way. Not anymore, but the general premise, you know what I mean? And so they have really big shoes to fill. And I I feel like DC in general doesn't step up to the plate to fulfill those characters in. They only care about the movie that they're working on. Uh-huh. They don't care about making sure that this character can shine in his own right that so that should I need to move him around or do something and motivate his character, it feels real and there's backing for it in the universe and all these things. And DC just uh, hasn't been able to do that yet. Now, I think obviously Snyder would have probably done that with his more continuous uh trilogy of this or whatever Uh and maybe he will i I mean obviously we've been getting tons of reports from him and the studio saying but they say all kinds of shit they said it wasn't coming out in the first and they said that they weren't they were like no we're not gonna do anything but who knows maybe they yeah like i said maybe they will People change minds and so do money (laughs) baby so um i'll never tell once again i i and i did i'd admitted that previously in other casts i'll say it again i was wrong they got the snyder cast made so based on that i'm not gonna say they can't do it again that'd be like spitting in the face of the wind (laughs) um i was gonna go over did you see the news that they're bringing out this um Mar uh Captain Marvel character or sorry uh Captain America character that is the LGBT uh, yeah 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 I did it's a new character though right it's yeah, not it's a Cap a, he's yeah. not t- but this is his uh his name is Aaron Fisher is inspired by heroes of the queer community activist leaders and everyday folks pushing for a better life he stands for the oppressed and the forgotten I hope his debut story resonates with readers and helps him inspire the next generation of heroes and this is from Joshua. Uh, True Hill, who looks like who's the creator of Aaron, alongside our art, artist uh, Jan Buzz, Buzzudul. Sorry, I, I I butchered your name, <laughs> but yeah. So 
Um, that's the premise of this character. I I think that any character. I I think the premise of almost any character doesn't matter. Right. I I feel that it doesn't matter what you put the premise of a character as. It's all about the context behind their character. Yeah. And, and yeah. And and there's a couple shows and things that put a lot of that into uh action. Um, have you been watching the YouTube guys? No, I have not seen that one yet. Okay, so I can't make that one. Um, uh, can't make that one. Another one, anime that I know you probably haven't seen. Um, uh, but basically, it doesn't matter what kind of ridiculousness ha- your character has gotten to. It's about the story that leads them to be yeah. that character, right? And how mm-hmm. how well it's crafted and how well it's done. So I think, like, once again, I, the other thing being with the exception that a LGBT Captain America would likely find himself or herself, obviously this is from the guy, but whatever, in a more situations with uh, the LGBT community and therefore would be around more LGBT activity to fight LGBT-focused crime. It shouldn't be any real difference in practice, technically, from right. the right. It saves people of all creeds, etc. Um, now maybe they beat up, you know, bigots a little harder. Or something. Yeah. Or and once again, probably focus on that type of crime because those are the kinds of areas they find themselves in until you know moved out of those situations. You know, uh-huh. you don't see a uh, spawn beating up aliens most of the time no that's not at all that's just um, not his purview he beats up angels and demons. alien angels I, every time i see todd no, angels, I, they yeah, always remind me of like aliens i'm like he's, these are what, what i is think this? he drew them to, ship. <laughs> i think he actually wait i don't remember i think he drew them to be like scientology's aliens i don't know yeah i have to finish it but yeah, i remember I them know. being in yeah but that, the, no the, i do remember the the fact I, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that was funny no 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 it, and it is it's, but uh, yeah, I I feel like uh, that that you know people put so much importance on it both sides, right? Like people are like, oh, you know, have, you know, have to have to do this and have to have to do them. Like, look, in practice, we're all just people, right? So if you just have them interact like people, you deal with issues that everybody deals with, which it does include. Uh, what would that be? That's sex. Or is that, I don't know what that is, but it is discrimination. And I think most people have at one point in their life, even, you know, white people dealt with some kind of discrimination or seen some kind of discrimination. Uh, Whether that even be for the fact that you're from the wrong side of town, that you uh, are from the wrong family, right? The own, whatever that classic feud, blood feud is, the O'Neills versus the McPatricks, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? This, you, people will at some point in their life most likely face some form of discrimination. And so it's not wild to have it as a part of the story. So mm-hmm. I feel like there's so much like hate and like, and not even hate, just like attention pushed towards that, that fact in light of, and like I get it sometimes obviously from the LGBT community. They're just like, yay, we got another one because they don't have as many right have yeah. as many heroes so it's nice for them every time they get one is a win and it's definitely a win but you know i i feel like it's both sides right when you push on them and you're like oh well they're lgbt i was like well yes but can we focus on the fact that they're also you know a person and a hero that upholds good moral values and things like that you know, it shouldn't just be about their sexuality either. Yeah, I see what you although, mean that way. Although celeb- they should definitely still celebrate their sexuality. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah ab- I think absolutely it, not about yeah. like, hiding it and being like, mm-hmm. oh, you can't say you're LGBT. No, I'm not saying that either. Uh, what I'm saying is it's kind of like branding for Coca-Cola, right? You don't have to say, 
It's like Wayne's World. I would never go out for Coca Cola. <laughs> it's like just let it flow naturally. It's like, oh, what were you doing? I was just with my boyfriend. Going yeah, get his bike to me and boom, yeah, you go exactly. meet his boyfriend. Easy. Done though. No problem. Like, dude, people like had alien girlfriends in other comics. It's, it's really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I was gonna move forward to the other thing on oh, my news here was um, Ace Ventura three is happening, I guess, with development at Amazon. And it's supposed to be done by the Sonic the Hedgehog writers. Well, is Jim Carrey in it? I have no clue. I did not read. Right, well, the if he's article. not, then I don't care. You do like either. Yeah, I know that's what I said. I was like, if he's not gonna uh, be in it, you know, I I said that, but I kind of watched a little bit of like the little Ace Ventura movie. Oh, did you watch that? <laughs> a little bit. I don't think I watched the whole thing. It was a kid's movie for sure. Um, but I thought it was all right. I, I don't know, man. I thought it was good. Like, it it obviously was not the same level as Ace Ventura. But I mean, that was right. Jim Carrey doing Jim Carrey directed basically by Jim Carrey. Oh. Uh, he, uh... Oh, he might be doing well. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Because he was on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Yeah, that's why I was wondering when you said saying. that the writers were doing so it. So maybe, maybe they did get him to do another one. Like, Jim, come know. on, we can make you do another one. Come on, we got well, it. Well, because I can't remember. Was the second one commercially successful? Uh, I have no clue. You know, I've always just been a big fan of both the movies, honestly. I, I want to uh, see. Why wasn't there? I mean, I know they made a cartoon it. because it was so popular. That's for sure. But then the cartoon. I feel like at that time either, they though. made a cartoon out of like. I know. They just tried to, you know, get the money out of anything. Like, I remember popular. the Tarzan cartoon. Oh, I remember yeah. that. There were just. I felt like at that time and there was a cartoon for everything. Obviously. Okay. It, it, this is exactly why. Uh, now they were both big money blockbusters, okay. and uh, but I think it was mostly him not wanting to at that point go on. Okay, I'm Makes just sense. trying to see it right here, but I mean, you get tired of a character probably after a while. Yeah, I mean, he wants to be the same person for. 11 moves. <laughs> Take no, I, I did. I could definitely see it, especially a character like that is probably a very zany character, too. Yeah, so there was that, and um, what else did I have here? Uh, ah, now my thing's acting up on me. Yeah, I, I, I don't really see one real reason cited except for that they just i guess either he didn't want to do one or i guess they didn't push for it something like that yeah could have been it um was it what comics did you read then this month and or this week i mean <laughs> oh gosh which ones have i been trying to catch up on uh, i read the thor one that was some pretty cool stuff with like odin yeah, I liked it. I liked his old new little look he was going for because he lost everything. <laughs> yeah, I've been going through the Wolverine ones. Dead Deadpool had ended a while back, so I've been waiting for something real new to kick off with him. Did you read his uh, anniversary issue? I did or read his, his anniversary. Birthday, his 30th birthday one. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one, but I, I'm waiting for a new series because I really do enjoy Deadpool series. I they, do they, too. They uh, generally are pretty good. The last one was pretty good too. It was alright. I just don't care for Kelly Thompson's writing sometimes, so, but yeah, she's all, she's alright every once in a while. It's uh, up and down. I feel for for her. I feel like she understands Deadpool, but maybe not great story writing. Yeah, if that makes um, sense. Yeah, it was okay though. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, I did finally finish the Deadpool series like I think a few weeks ago, and that one yeah was alright. I did like it because it did bring Elsa Bloodstone. She's one of my kind of favorite characters in the that universe. Was, that was real cool to see her back in some where for a minute. Somewhat obviously made sense with the background of what they were doing. Yeah, so I, I I accepted it. it was pretty cool. The the biggest one for me was just that I feel like they always have to make it a love interest thing. Yeah, you know, but it's just I don't know. Bro. I guess it's just because he falls for anything, and we're just like at this point, he's like, uh, I'm all right with him, but it's always the token kind of like oh, female thing where it's like, even though she's obviously not your just an average token female, whatever. 
but I like it when characters are. I also felt like she was written a little off center for her character, just mm-hmm. a little. She still was pretty, pretty else. Awesome. She's usually a bit more somber and yeah, a little, a little less patient. I guess uh, Deadpool pushed her to the edge. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's just something about him. Well, the monster in him, I don't know. Um, uh, have you been reading the Maestro stuff? I f- uh, finally finished all that, and I've been wa- uh, reading the War and Pox stuff too. And that's been yeah, that's the one well. I'm talking about. That's the one that's going now. Uh, maybe that one finished. I think it was only like another four issues. I think it's still got yeah a couple more issues. Um, oh, you know what I did forget here was Venom. Uh, has finally got a release date this uh, oh, cool. this June, I think, or July twenty fifth. It looks like. You think we'll be finished with King of Black by the? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't no, know. it's supposed to be done by here because they're already planning yeah. their next event, that reborn. <laughs> uh, please give us a break. There are uh, too many in this one. The Toys R Us is supposed to be coming back, making a return. Uh, I did hear about that. That was pretty interesting. A live not, action I mean, Powerpuff Girls. What do you think about that? I don't even know, honestly. Because obviously it's super cartoony, but I mean, I guess there's no real reason it couldn't be done in a, a pretty decent, like, kindergarten cop kind of manner thing. Yeah. Than the kids or the cops. Right. So, sorry, what were we going to say about Toys R Us? What do you think about that coming back? I, I thought it was really cool. It's not often we see companies resurrect, you know what I mean? I mean so to ever get one is really... It'd be really nice to have them come back at a time like this. It's it's so hard going at Target or Walmart and just bothering Walmart people to be like, what are you talking about? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What toys? This man child. Yeah, but you're still going to have to deal with that for a little bit after uh, afterwards, just due to the whole, you know, them having yeah. to find people again who know what they're doing and learn yep. what they're doing um but Mon- i mean it would be uh oh another thing is monsters university tv show is finally coming out july 2nd oh uh, and it's supposed to be uh returning a lot of the original cast i believe uh for the voice acting so that's that should be pretty cool i'm excited for that um let me see let another me see th- oh i know I, I remember and then another thing we had here was that um Oh, uh, NECA's make, uh, looks like they have the license for the thing, finally. Uh, they, oh. it was Kurt Russell's 70th birthday, uh, five days ago. I did that see that. not look like he's aged at all. It was since I've watched that San- Santa Claus movie with him, he looks the same. <laughs> he hasn't, he hasn't aged a day since Bad Santa or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, so it was cool. They're making a figure out of him, uh, for the Thing movie. Uh, so it it looks really cool. I'm excited for this. Um, so that means hopefully they'll do some more uh, stuff with the Thing here if that license does pretty good here. Um, that'll definitely be a a good thing for a lot of reasons because it was such a good movie. I still love the. It still holds up to this time. Like the the it's visual effects, at least movie. I still think do. They're pretty decent. I mean, they're definitely. Not to today's stylish standard, but they hold up in the sense that they look real enough. Yeah. Like, were you to restructure the footage to be like a 4K, like, I don't know how you, like, if you would somehow <laughs> do it, then maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? It would be the mm-hmm. exact, but they, I mean, it, for what it is, it's which is practical effects. I think those practical effects basically stand up to modern practice. <laughs> and they just fit the mood of the movie, which really is this kind of, not mess, but like, infection, you know? You know A little this... bit of a body horror kind of movie. Yes, definitely. Which I I thought about it earlier today while like watching shit and pausing videos, and I was like, man, if you just pause one piece at the wrong time, it's a body horror show. <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, other than that, that's all I kind of had on my list here. I mean, I did read the uh, Deadpool. Did you check out uh, the Eternals? I have not. That? Still, I got to read. I, I got those I was... issues, but I haven't checked them out yet. But they're pretty decent, man. I I like what they're doing, and I see why they're kind of doing it to push the structure towards the thing. It almost looks though mm-hmm. like Hickman's designing it with the way some of the graphics are laid. Huh. So, and I don't know if he is. I didn't actually. Ch- Let me double check. I'll have to look at it. Yeah, I, I still have to read it. It's on my I don't even know uh, list of reads here. 
Um, I've just been reading this book. Maniac in New York. <laughs> this this is actually pretty good too. This is from uh, was it Aftershock? Yeah, Aftershock Comics. Yeah, I think you showed me one of them. Yeah, this one's pretty crazy. It's just about um, a serial killer who just goes like crazy rampant in like New York, and uh, like he just shows up wherever and whenever, and then he ends up uh, killing a lot of people, and then he just oh, disappears. Wow. <laughs> that so, sounds like a crazy one. I like the cover art, so I mean, I'm sure yeah, it'll be a good, good one. A good, uh, good I, I figured out who wrote the Eternals, but it's Karen Kelly. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's actually pretty good. I I I enjoy his stuff, but I think it's funny because I feel like we were talking about another different earlier. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh. Well, then I'll have to definitely check it out here soon. Then, if he's writing it. He, it's uh, pretty good. I, I like I said, the way the style is structured is like a little different. So it's probably it'll never be like a hit for like you know the modern or the mass you know yeah, general I mean, stuff. Yeah, but, because people are like, I don't know who the Eternals are. <laughs> I'm not yeah, really, I'm, like, and even do, even beyond that, the like story type is a little like darker. I'd say not like super huh. dark or anything, but more like pace. It's interesting. It's more about story building. Okay. Like okay. So check it out. Cool. Um. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think I had anything else here too. I read. I mean, yeah. I've been reading just some indie stuff here and there. Fear Case, which is that one I told you. It's a about these. Um. What's the? It's a secret service. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about the secret the secret service that uh, which you think are supposed to only protect the president, but I guess they have this one case that uh is a uh, it's like a little black box that people have heard about before and it's just caused mass destruction every time it goes and oh it's to, it's i do remember it it because, yeah. and uh and if then you if don't you don't give it, it away yeah it somebody you love or anything like yeah, that. yeah i i remember that one i i'd only remember reading the first chapter but i'm oh, interested to see how much yeah i read the first oh, one oh. it's, it's gotten second farther though right out. yeah second nice. one just came out so if you want to check that out so we think it's so far it was pretty good. I like the crypticness. I want to see where it kind of pushes it. You know what I mean? Because I feel like we got a lot of tease and build up in this one. Mm-hmm. And so the next one's probably going to be a... I haven't seen two, but it's probably going to be the delivery of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've uh, I've enjoyed that one pretty good so far. And then, you know what? Actually, I read two uh, last... Oh, Alien comes out this uh, this week. Did you see the Thor Predator crossover coming? Oh, there's a Thor Predator crossover coming over. Hmm. I think it it's just released the cover today. Check that out. Um, let me see what else here. Well, that's uh, I read uh this other book called Midnight Western Theater. It's um uh, vampires in the Western time. <laughs> so that's oh, this is the one I read that was really good. You should check it out. It's called Orphan and the Five Beasts. It's, uh, uh, maybe it's just a. It might just be a variant. Oh yeah, repeat. because they're probably doing yeah the predator one next. Yeah, because they did a bunch of alien variants. So yeah, so they're, they're just doing the, the variant. It's probably not. Good. Okay. Um. Let's see. So this one's pretty good. Um. It's basically about this orphan who has his master die, and his master explains to him a story that, um, he taught his you know kind of his ancient ways fighting style to these four kind of monks I believe. Uh, who were special in their own way, and they needed help at the time because their their town, their village was getting ravaged by these evil, you know, barbarians or whatever. And um, so he 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 tells them no because you know I, I it's only for me and for you know wh- whoever I else pass on, but I can't pass on to you. Then I guess they're they're very determined to learn, and so he eventually you know caves in and and teaches these five or four. I can't remember it's five or four, but um. Then they end up uh, defeating them, but then they end up becoming, um, like, I guess, uh, just overconfident of themselves and very more like, you know, they they, they just became very evil themselves at one at, at this okay. point now. And so um, this he tells the little boy, you know, you got to go and stop these evil spirits now because they've, you know, they've run rampant now already. They're going too far. And so he ends up passing away because these are his last words to the, this orphan child that he taught the ways to. 
and um so he goes ahead and you know gotta go stop him so Basically, yeah, this kid goes in and he stops these really crazy, outrageous like characters like this. Oh, and it had the most funniest name for one of the the he ha- his name was like uh because he had thunder thighs. His like legs are so huge, and he was like literally on the horse, yo. And like he came in riding in the horse and he crushed the horse. <laughs> it was so. Like, and he's like, "Give me another horse!" And and the guys are like, "There's no more horses. You've you've crushed, <laughs> you crushed them all." Them all. <laughs> that does sound pretty good. Honestly. So I was like, "Oh, this, oh, this, bro!" And then the art is what really. I, I this is the only reason why I went to read it was because the artist, um, James Stokey, he does some amazing art. He's like very, um, what's the word? Not like a uh, very detailed, but there's like a, a art style for it. Um, he just like puts so much like line work into everything he's drawing into, and uh, you you appreciate the art, I, I think. Uh, so that's the one for sure reason why I picked it up because oh I like his art I've read it I've read it before. I do like good lining. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out because of that, and then I think he's writing it too. So he's been uh, doing a pretty good story as well. But uh, other than that, yeah, he meets these big outrageous foes and he has to stop them. Um, so I mean, it them- sounds interesting. I don't know why, but it kind of sounds for some. Even though it's not the same, it sounds like it reminds me of Shaolin Showdown just slightly. Just like oh, the yeah. ghost aspect, the monk aspect, the the four thing. It just slightly reminded me of that. Obviously it doesn't at all share any of the components. <laughs> but it just like, it's like oh, wow. But it sounds interesting and it definitely sounds hilarious. Yeah, you'll so definitely check that one out. It's been one of my favorites. Uh, another one I've been reading is Radiant Black for Image is coming out. Um it's like their superhero book. Um oh. and that one's being written by um Kyle Higgins, who actually I uh, enjoyed his writing because he did all the Power Ranger books that first came out. I feel and he like actually, he's done some other stuff too, right? He might have done some other things, but I really enjoyed his work on Power Rangers because he kind of really did bring Power Rangers to the modern times and even brought them to more of a mature kind of writing style than the kid kid of show that we used to watch as well. And bringing even new and popular cool characters like the Ranger Slayer, uh, Draquan, you know, the half Green Ranger, White Ranger, or even like the, uh, I forget what the, it was called. It was called the Black Shark, or I can't remember, but it was like this big armor. What was it again? It was Kyle Higgins. Kyle Higgins. Okay, I had put in Carl. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Kyle. Um, He actually just did the Rise of Ultimate tomorrow. So that's ah, it. that's right. That's another one he did, which makes sense because. I mean, he did a good uh, job of kind of modernizing and uh, the Power Rangers. It's kind of in that same realm, so I mean, kind of makes sense for him to do that. Uh, I do remember him writing that one. There's a couple. Things. He's done some of the little, uh, Death Wolf Green stuff. He's done oh, nice. Origin Vision. Which is a good one. Uh, he's done a decent amount for DC. Actually, he's done a good amount of Batman. Deathstroke, and uh, he's actually the book is primary author on Nightwing, which, uh, at least from like 2011 to 2014, which from what I remember, that's a very good section of Nightwing. From what I've heard, I don't so. remember if I've read that specific run, but I do think that that's nice. Um, well, it's so good. He's got a pretty good portfolio. <laughs> I I always like to check. For, it depends on what it's doing, right? Like some people, some some titles I don't care as much, but like I like to check what they've done before so I can get a feel of what their writing is. Mm-hmm. Uh, same for uh, that's why the character creation is a big one for me. Like who created the character? Like if Bendis creates a character, it's probably gonna be dope. <laughs> He may not be great at writing them after he makes them. Sometimes, Man, yeah. is he good at making characters. <laughs> He's good, man. He's like People were hating on some of the Superman stuff, but he made some dope characters to fight Superman. I, I gotta say, some of his original stuff and that was awesome. Nice. Um, and then, uh, same with, uh, I think he did Miles Morales, and then he did Naomi as well, right? Yeah, he did that too as well which is actually i heard now going to be a cw show they're yeah, already getting some cast so members for that i thought it was so interesting to see her in the justice league stuff that was very yeah confusing. have you read her orig- his original uh miniseries for her i have still haven't read the i read like the first chapter pretty good. I, I got yeah. through the first 
I like the art style for sure. Jamal Campbell is really good too. He actually did the, uh, I believe, the Power Ranger comic covers oh, cool. uh, when they first came out too, as well. And his, yeah, his art's really good. I like it. It's very, um, uh, from what I remember, it's very bouncy and like. Yeah, it is. It's got really nice colors too. The way. Yeah. It, um, let me see the another book I think you should check out. Oh yeah, Transformers Beast Wars is back. I was like right. so excited I do for that. We talked about that. I do want to check that out. I love read. Beast it's, Wars it's, is by far my favorite. Part. It's always been my favorite too. <laughs> so, was, there was like this one PlayStation game. That's how I got it. But I love. Um, the, another one I think you should check out is from Scott Snyder. His new uh, original story called Noctera, which actually was a. Uh, I heard about that release. Starter. Yeah, yeah, it was I a Kickstarter first, and then yeah, he now. You know, is that Snyder does or not that? Sorry, uh, Scott Snyder does pretty decently. Yeah, he's got I some do good think stuff, that you know. they need to let sometimes let some other people do some stuff. <laughs> he's in everything, but he's <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely he's, one of he the head doing the, What the death uh, death metal stuff wasn't he? Oh, uh, even beyond that, he did most of Batman, Batman for a long time. Yeah. He's, he's had his other ones. He, he he's the he's honestly for most as I consider him one of the creative leads at dc like nice. he pushes the direction of a lot of the comics i think and i think he does a good job there nice. are once again things that i think dc or maybe probably like warner brothers or somebody else controlling them maybe not this big, pushes nice. which is like make batman everything but yeah. besides that <laughs> but uh you should definitely check it out so uh, this is kind of the the premise so 10 years after the world is plunged into an everlasting night that turns all living creatures into monstrous shades the only way to survive is to stay close to artificial light. Uh, enter uh, Valentina Val Riggs, a skilled uh, ferryman who transports people and good, goods along deadly uh, unlit roads with her heavily emulated uh, 18-wheeler. <laughs> so it's been pretty good. I liked it. It's uh, Monsters are pretty cool co concepts that they've created um, because like it's like the... our creatures, but they've been like morphed into these like dark, creature flying but you know everything okay. that we know is just now morphed into these dark kind of yeah it's pre it's pretty good you should check it out even I, you know what i like too is the the coloring that they're using is oh, perfect too because you know with the artificial lighting they're doing some really cool i think color work on the lights the light working in there so it's really it's a really cool uh book i, I think it's another one you should uh definitely check out when you can i'll try to check it out when i can i got a big list of books i have to pick out so we'll have to see how it goes <laughs> I mean, other than that, that's pretty much all I have for today. I think we're I think over the hour. <laughs> yeah, we're we're definitely over our hour, which isn't too bad. I mean, when we have the stuff, it's good, and I'm glad that for once we have enough content to go for an hour. <laughs> but no, it it's definitely been really good to see a lot of the stuff going on the side for comics, right? Like, no offense to Marvel and DC, but I like it when the little guys do more good stuff because then I have something else to. Read. Yeah, right, no, like, there's, there's some really cool, interesting indie stuff like yeah. that. You know, if any good, and then you guys can like just break away sometimes from the absolutely the big two. and and not shitting on them, but they they do tend to sometimes get repetitive and stale yeah, due to their after a while. due to the nature of their comic view. It's it's yeah, it's hard to you know keep writing for something that's like, well, what did they Continuity's already do that's not been done right? already? <laughs> Continuity's a bitch. <laughs> but yeah no i think it was a good one thanks everybody who came to watch especially the person who reminded us we were muted <laughs> and uh we'll see you next time on comic convos if you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel remember to attack that like button subscribe on youtube follow on twitch or join our discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams we know we're not perfect and we can always improve so please visit our discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves finally if you're just starting for more content you can become an honorary member of 3d productions at patreon.com 3d and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month